David R. here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, Master of the Basics, Spanish, by Christopher Kendris. Now this book starts off like any basic language book should start. There's a pronunciation guide. You learn to pronounce vowels, diphthongs, triphthongs, consonants. It's easy enough. And then you move into nouns, which are not so hard, like regular, irregular, plural. But by page 27, you start one of many exercises that are in this book. If you're a beginning student, you're going to find these exercises to be a little bit difficult. I recommend that you go through this one first. Basic Spanish practice makes perfect. Or even this one here. Beginning Spanish practice makes perfect. And as you can see, it comes with a CD. From nouns, you move on to articles. Articles are not that hard. I just don't know why articles are placed between nouns and adjectives. <laughs> if it were me and I was writing this book, I would have placed the articles maybe before the nouns since they're relatively easy. And so on page 53, the book moves into direct object pronouns. I think that happens too soon. There are whole books that are dedicated to that subject. For instance, this one here, uh, Spanish Pronouns and Prepositions. This book has a lot of direct object pronouns and adjectives and prepositions. <laughs> and then about halfway through the book, you finally get to verbs. But they go about it the wrong way. They don't list just simple verbs like ser and a star, they go through and throw you right into the reflexive. And, and then when you do get to a verb like the preterite, you just get very little, like a page. And the same goes for the subjunctive. Uh, I don't like that. I think there should be a lot more explaining going on. And... There's a lot of lists in this book, lists of synonyms, lists of idioms, um, lists of antonyms. Now, if you want to write flashcards like these, then you could use those lists to your advantage. But other than that, um, I think they're, they're necessary eventually, but maybe not so necessary to just throw in there. Towards the end of the book, you'll finally get to some basics, like days of the week, months of the year, time, numbers. But I think that section should have been placed at the beginning, or at least towards the beginning somewhere. And then by page 215, I think the book ends even though it goes on to 370. Why I say it ends at page 215 is because there's no more lessons. It's just tests and uh, there's verb conjugation tables, definitions. So I, uh, I don't recommend this book. If you want to get it and maybe you've had some Spanish already and you want to just kind of refresh your memory, then it might be worth getting. But other than that, I, I highly recommend going for a book like this one here, Complete Spanish Grammar, something like that. Or, or like I said earlier, the beginner books. You know, the practice makes perfect. I, I love practice makes perfect books. And I'm surprised I haven't done a review of those yet. But I'll get around to it eventually. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. Talk to you later. Bye.